Hey there, it's Marvina, and I wanted to welcome you to my mediumship video today. So this is the first part of our Summer Psychic Series, and today's uh, video is going to be all about mediumship and how you can start yourself up as a medium. So one of the things that inspired me to create this video this year is they were doing a rerun of all of the Harry Potter uh, videos and or the movies and I read Harry Potter a long time ago and read most of the books and just absolutely fell in love with the character and with all of the opportunities that were presented to Harry Potter through the Hogwarts school so this puts me in mind of the mystery schools and we still have mystery schools that are carried on today through many different traditions and so this is my little mini version of a mystery school and so we're going through the mysteries of mediumship today so a lot of people think that mediumship might be sort of a new age thing or something that is very recent but actually i think mediumship has just gone back through eons of time into our past and it was a way for us to kind of receive encouragement for our journey in the physical to help us to stay motivated to help us stay inspired and to just know that there's more to life than just what we can perceive through our physical senses and what is like right in front of us so even back in the caveman cave woman days i think there were people who were wired a little bit differently that they could perceive impressions and perceive messages from uh, spirits who had gone on before us and it helped them to um, stay encouraged and maybe to continue a relationship even though they were no longer focused in a physical body so there are many different types of ways of um, interacting with the spirit world the way that spirit works with me is through clairvoyance clairaudience and clairessentience so clair is a french word it means clear so clairvoyance is clear seeing clairaudience is clear hearing and clairessentience is clear feeling so those are the ways that I receive impressions. All of us have wiring and some of the, the wiring, you, you sort of think of it as like your feelers that extend beyond your what your physical eyes can comprehend and can see. But these, um, these feelers, they go out into the universe and they connect to other people they connect to spirits and even they connect with the elements and they pull in data and we're always like interpreting that data through the universal symbolism uh, or the universal language which is symbolism so we perceive symbols and it's like our our wiring understands code on a symbolic level and it interprets that code sometimes our ego personalities we might be able to crack that code and sometimes we know there is a body of information there or there is a, a spirit that's trying to communicate but we can't quite crack that code but it's still there and it is readable and we can learn to decipher those codes. I think all of us understand that on um, an intuitive level and being able to um, kind of wake up and recognize it. I think that's what we're working on today. So mediumship 
for different people, it will kind of take a different track. So the way spirit mainly works with me is through being able to see energy or to hear it or to feel it. There are other people that might experience it uh, in a different way. Like there are some mediums that receive the energy and they use that, what they get, that body of information to help with healing or to uh, direct a person in, in a way that can help make their soul journey a little more fun or help them to be a healthier person or to move forward in a good way. The thing that is really going to help you more than anything in being able to uh, kind of um, condition your, your chakra centers to receiving information and being able to make it useful in your life is going to um, be using a meditation routine on a very regular basis. And I think specifically using a meditation routine that uh, works with different breathing exercises. And I really prefer the Hatha yoga breathing exercises. And the reason that I like those is so that um, the, the breath work, especially when you visualize light coming into your third eye, coming into the centers in the brain, the organs in the brain that um, deal with our, our vision, especially being able to see in other realities, and then also our throat chakra, the light helps to stimulate those organs. It helps to activate those organs and kind of um, clear out any debris that might have been lodged in your chakras through um, you know, different circumstances. So one of the things that we want to think about first is like clearing the pathways of communication. And so there's like layers to the process of development. And but a, a good meditation program on a regular basis is going to be fundamental for you to be able to have a really good foundation and have everything, the system set in place so that you can clear the pathways, particularly the chakra systems, the third eye, the throat chakra, the crown chakra, the heart chakra. Those are going to be the ones that, that really kind of set things in motion so that you can perceive energy and be in a position to interpret what it is that you see or what it is that you feel around you. So I like the Hatha yoga breathing technique and um, I have a handful of videos and some blog articles and I think I have some audios like on iTunes that you can look at in, um, in my file section and on my YouTube channel. So those are all free resources, but you want to find something that sort of works into your life that you can make a commitment to. And I know that um, when you're just starting a meditation program, and particularly one with the yoga style breathing, that it can feel very awkward at first. And I know it did for me. And you might feel like, oh, I didn't, I didn't experience anything different, or this just feels like it's not gonna work. Trust me that we all go through an awkward phase before we really um, get it and we're able to use those breathing techniques and, and particularly with the visualization and the light. It, it takes a while before we're really comfortable with it and before you might see results from it, but it is definitely worth pushing through. When you are going out to the universe and you're making a declaration that I want more in my life, the universe will say yes, but there is a price to pay for that. 
And so we have to figure out, well, what is the price that I need to pay in order for me to be able to um, activate this aspect of my naturalness. So in this case, the, what part of the price is going to be having a consistent meditation routine. And you may need to finesse your meditation routine and change it up from time to time so that it sort of grows with you. But for the most part, in the beginning, you're going to be clearing a lot of debris out of your systems that might be serving, that might be blocking your ability to perceive energy. And so that's what you have to do first. It's like you have to clear the pathways. So you sort of think of it as like, if there was an old house and you saw this house and you're like, oh, I wanna live there, even though it's been abandoned for a while. And I think I can clean it up and, and make something out of it. So you go plug it into um, an electrical panel. And so now you've got lights and you're, you've got air conditioning. You're like, yeah, I can get in there and I can clean it up. And, and uh, for a while, it's like you've got um, energy in the house and air conditioning. But then after a while, you're running this high voltage of electricity and you're running it through old a wiring and it starts to wear uh, at different areas that um, that might have debris or that just were cracked or um, you know just old and so then you might have a blowout or uh, an electrical fire and then it's like your whole house could burn down or you could use you could lose a lot of it so this is like we are we have to um we have to look at our wiring and we have to realize that there might be debris in there and so that debris what it looks like is old thought forms where you might have had image makers in the past that said um you know if you want to go to heaven you cannot uh, deal with spirits you know, the only spirit you deal with is is this, that, and the other. And if you mess with spirits in any way, then you're going to go to hell or you're going to invoke trouble like the devil or whatever. So that might be a, um, a piece of information that you latched onto when you were a kid and you're like, oh, my God, I can't talk to anybody that thinks different than me or I can't explore another belief system or explore some of my natural gifts because I don't feel evil when, you know, I, I feel like I can, I have some natural intuition and some natural ability and it, it feels natural to me. It doesn't feel evil. But, you know, so-and-so said in Sunday school that I can go to hell if I do this, that, and the other, or if I dabble with witches or dabble with psychic um, abilities. So that might be a chunk of debris that has been crystallized in one of your chakras um, that you kind of have an attachment to. Well, you have to replace that body of information at, with another higher vibrational, from a higher vibrational consciousness piece of information, but it has to be on the same subject. And, um, and that way it's like you're deleting an old file that was lodged in your system and you're replacing it with something that is a higher vibrational piece of information, but it's on the same subject. But it's coming from a higher place. And um, it might be in the way of positive self-talk, of affirmations, that sort of thing, so that, um, that you can, it's like you can pull from a different place within yourself that you're, you're not pulling up fear whenever you're um, thinking about 
development in a certain way because when when you're working with fear energy it lowers your vibration and it kind of squelches your ability to um, to kind of put yourself out there in the world so I'm gonna have to check my message real quick and make sure there's nothing going on with hang on a second I'll be okay so um, I had one of my uh, my ladies that couldn't jump on so I'll have to send her the replay um, I apologize I can see everybody there but I can't see uh, well enough to make out your names but I I know you're there and I'm grateful and excited to um, be able to share some of this information with you today a little bit later on I'm going to um, be able to bring in some uh, open it things up for questions so uh, get your questions ready if you have some paper with you and a pen just jot them down and um, a little bit later in the group we're going to um, you know accept questions and I will have uh, this video up as a replay so that you'll be able to um, watch it again later on all right so we were talking about clearing a pathway so there is a price to pay to develop in any skill and we have to be willing to do the necessary foundation work so that when we start ourselves up as a medium that we've got a good solid foundation and a meditation routine is going to help you um, not only stimulate and activate the different cells and the different organs in the brain that deal with being able to receive data on higher vibrational levels and interpret that data but also to um, clear out any junk that's in our system and so that could be detoxing you mentally emotionally and even physically and I there whenever we have um, we've led a lifestyle that might have been um, a little bit like indulgent then we're going to have a lot of detoxing to do and this mediumship requires us to uh, really calibrate ourselves to a much higher vibrational level and to maintain that um, as best we can I mean we don't have to be a saint or or live like a saint in order to relay messages but you really um, need to be aware that the quality of your information requires you to kind of keep a, a higher vibration around you than if you were to indulge yourself in every little whim so what I'm talking about is like drugs or alcohol or um, you know a seriously overeating uh, you're going to um, put a drag on your system and whenever you start to run that high voltage energy through that wiring then um, then you kind of run the risk of overloading one of your chakras having a chakra blowout having which kind of looks like a meltdown and um, so that's not healthy and it's not desirable and it doesn't have to be that way so usually the first thing that we work with is detoxing and it could be on all levels and it usually is and it's not pretty uh, when we go through detoxing you might need to cry a lot you might have a lot of, of thoughts that come up from um, people in the past that might have hurt you might have disappointed you on some level and it's our job right now is to um, to look at those events and do our best to look at them from a different direction uh, to get a different perspective about what it is that we learned from that person and and we want to uh, forgive them maybe even forgive ourselves so that we can uh, call back our power call back our soul pieces 
from that person or that situation, whether they're living or um, in the spirit world. And when we can call back our power, call back our soul pieces from them, and we're in a very even place, then, then we're able to put that piece of business behind us. And it's like the energy that had been going to holding um, onto our anger, our hate, our fear, our disappointment, it's like we can reclaim that piece of life force energy and we can use it for our mediumship development because it does take a lot of energy out of us. I really feel like there's no shortcuts to developing anything uh, that's important to us and really putting ourselves out in the world in a good way. There's not any shortcuts. And so just be prepared to do it right from the beginning and you're going to um, get results faster that way and your results will be sustainable it won't be just like a flash in the pan so knowledge is power the more that we can educate and learn about mediumship uh, the art of mediumship and it helps us to kind of um, get a sense of how other people have done it before us. And I think it's really good to realize that each and every one of us, we're going to have our own take on how we put it out into the world. There are some people that um, they bring through messages uh, with evidence. There are some people who might bring in um, healing ideas. We're all going to have a little bit of a different way that we perceive the world around us, the spirits around us, and that we interpret their messages. I also feel like that your ability to clearly understand the spirits that come into connection with you is determined by how clear your own energy field is. So if you're a hot mess and you have a lot of personal issues that you're working on, then you're not going to be able to bring through clear messages for um, the people that are sitting with you. All right, so I apologize. I get excited and I, um, I'm i trying to figure out, you know, the best way to, um, you know, keep, um, to set you up for um, a startup. So your foundation is going to be a regular meditation room. I recommend 20 minutes a day, five days a week. I think it's good that you have a couple of days off to clear your head and um, let yourself kind of be a regular person and not have to think about um, other things. I think it helps you to stay balanced. And it's, it's good to be uh, enthusiastic, but it's not good to be over the top because you run the risk of burnout that way and it's just not healthy. So think about balance in all things. So meditating, uh, five times a day is it's over the top. So we want to put due diligence into our program, but you don't have to like overdo it and overthink it. When I first started um, working with spirit, I would I would meditate about an hour a day, and I would you know four or five times a week. Uh, but if you can get a good solid 20 minutes, clear your mind, ask spirit to work with you and use some of the breathing exercises, then you're going to get a lot of solid work done. It won't come overnight, but it will come if you are very diligent about it. And again, I like the Hatha yoga breathing exercises for really uh, clearing a pathway and uh, getting lots of energy into the organs in the brain that perceive um, spirits and perceive uh, images. 
Another thing that you want to think about is why you do what you do. So create an intention for your development. So what I said every night before I went to sleep is um, I asked my angels, guides, and teachers to help me to develop my natural gifts and talents to the highest degree that I can. And so while I'm sleeping at night, they give me ideas, they might give me encouragement, uh, they might point me into a direction of a teacher or someone that, um, that I could work with that would help me. So setting your intention is like another piece of your foundation of knowing why you do what you do. And I really think it's good to lean towards developing my natural gifts because if, if your naturalness is more towards expressing spirit through art, then that's the way you want to go. Don't feel like um, that you have to model like blow by blow, like what I do or Teresa Caputo or John Edwards or other mediums. It's like you really want to take what is yours naturally and follow that because it's going to have a little bit of a different twist. There might be quite a few things that are very similar to the way that I work with spirit or someone else, but you're going to have your own naturalness on it. And I think that that is really important. So create affirmations and have your intention in mind. I think your intention is like the glue that helps you to persevere through all of the hard work, through the regular meditation routine, setting time to read and to uh, sit with spirit, work with spirit, and doing the due diligence to, to really make this happen. Your intention, it's like when you know what is truly important to get out of this, it helps you to go out and find the pieces that you can bring back that can keep taking you to a higher level. So intention is important. So you wanna write down on your notes, um, meditation, uh, regular meditation, uh, create your intention, and um, be prepared to commit and follow through you want to put together a library, and it doesn't have to be huge, of material, of books, resources that can keep you inspired and keep you motivated. So you can see the bookcase behind me. I have quite a few uh, books that they are my favorite ones that, um, and especially I like to collect books on symbolism because the more that you can um, put in your mind about symbolism, it's like whenever spirit is trying to give you a clue about something, then they have more resources of yours to pull from that are naturally in your library. When a spirit might be trying to relay like a body of information or an idea or something that, that I have never been exposed to, it it is possible it has been done i've done it before and other mediums have done it too but it's a little bit easier if you have some sort of an awareness about that it's like uh, the spirit and your guides can go pull from that that body of information to give you a little bit of a clue and help you to um, relay a message for somebody I feel like mediumship and interacting with the spirit world is very natural. And I just like to say, don't make it harder than it is. And um, it's important when uh, you're starting out to honor your own insight and your own knowing. Trust yourself that you're receiving information 
it's also important to protect yourself uh, psychically so that um, your information is not compromised by maybe um, entities that uh, that might want to um, kind of mess with you or um, distort the information or make it difficult for you to have an interaction. So when I do mediumship, I always create the intention to be of service for the person that I'm interacting with, to bring through messages that can help them to move forward in their life in a good way, to bring through messages from ancestors, angels, and spirit guides of light who love them. So all of those pieces of business are their affirmations. And um, I'm creating my intention of how I'm willing to work with spirit. And it's like the universe is recognizing how I'm claiming that in an I am way. So the universe works with me that way. And I always uh, create light around me whenever I'm doing a reading for someone or when I'm interacting with spirit. So in the way of prayers, and sometimes I will like set a circle um, and do like an invocation to um, the Holy Spirit, to the angels, to the ancestors, uh, to the different elements to help me like create a, a really strong circle. But what you can do is just uh, close your eyes, visualize, a, a circle of light around you, ask that your angels be present and to back out of your personal space in your room, any negative entities or negative energies or vibrations or spirits, ask your angels to set a high vibration around you of light and of love and to allow only ancestors and angels of light to come into your space with your client. So that way, or with the people that you're working with. So when you're first starting out, uh, you may not have clients, uh, but hopefully you'll have friends that you can work with. But uh, when you do that prayer and that intention, and you do it in that way, you are claiming your I am status and the universe will recognize that and will work with you in that way. So that way you can feel confident that um, you're working in a high vibrational place and uh, that the interactions that you have with those spirits, that they're from um, higher vibrational, uh, either ancestors or spirits or angels. So to me, that helps me to be more comfortable um, having an interaction with the spirit world is whenever I, I make that declaration. That is not the only way to do it. And there are other uh, mediums that, um, that might not do it that way. They might have a completely different approach. And so this is where you have to practice discernment and, and take what I offer and teach and maybe use it with an open mind and see for yourself how it works for you, but entertain how other people uh, do mediumship as well and, and do some, um, just explore and see whatever sort of way is going to work for you. The, uh, the medium that uh, taught me, um, she liked to do mediumship in a pitch dark room and I do as well. So a lot of times when I do my uh, spirit circles, my mediumship galleries, or my seances, they're all pretty much the same thing. I have a dark room, not all the time, but a lot of time. And um, one of the reasons is that when you have a dark room, there is nothing to compete uh, visually for your third eye. Uh, your third eye's attention. So everything you see 
is going to be spirit. And it's easier to see the angels and the higher vibrational master guides and teachers when they come into the space because they're very electrical in nature. And so they show themselves uh, as light when they come in. So you'll see the shimmers, the sparkles, the flashes of light and the little puffs of light. And when the ancestors come in, you see them as shadows. So I like to do that, but it's not the only way. And um, when I do like a, a regular mediumship reading in my office, then I may uh, turn the lights out and pull down my window shade. So it's not pitch dark, but it's still, it's pretty dark. And it just helps me to be able to just focus on spirit. But you can do uh, a mediumship uh, reading in full daylight, which I have done many, many different times. You don't have to have circumstances set up for you perfectly to do mediumship, but I think it helps uh, to support me, but it doesn't have to be um, perfect in order to relay information. I feel like um, one of the, the ways that I kind of think of how we're able to work with spirit is that we all have our physical body but beyond our physical body about six inches we have our emotional body and then beyond our emotional body another six or inches or so we have our mental body and then we have our causal body and then beyond that we have our um uh, we have our, wait a second, we have our emotional, our physical, our mental, and then we have our causal body. And whenever a spirit pulls, when they pull away from the physical body, they take the life force with them out of the physical body, but they still have the emotional body, they still have the mental body. And so they're able to connect to us through our mental body. And so my mental body is about, say, for instance, you know, 12 inches beyond my physical. And so in order to sort of merge into my energy field, they step into my mental body and they have their mental body on the in the spirit world. And so they're able to impress mentally, like mind to mind, ideas, um, messages, feelings, they might um, impress upon me their name, maybe their relationship to a person. Um, they might be able to tell me how they died. There is no end to the different um, messages or ways that they can uh, relay information to the person that they're connecting to. So what a medium does is receive that information and then relay that information to the person that they're working with. And I know for a lot of you that it feels like really um, out there, but when you, you think about just putting words to a feeling. So when they merge into your space, you're going to feel something because we're, um, we can't have like that go from, okay, I'm just have my energy around me to, okay, um, you know, my friend's mother's spirit is now merged into my energy field. You're going to feel something. So what you want to think about doing is putting some words to whatever it is that you're feeling. And um, you really have to face your fears of being thought wrong or of somebody thinking that you're completely off your rocker, that you're crazy, or that you're evil, or that you're a witch or that you're some kind of um, you know, crazy supernatural person, we really have to face our fears and act in spite of those fears uh, that 
uh, they're, they'll think we're crazy or foolish or whatever, whatever those fears are. We have to face those and take action in spite of them. And so that action is, is saying, you know, I feel like your mother is connecting. And, and then it's like when you, um, when they are, when they first connect to you, feel tension in your physical body somewhere, or I do. And you may feel or discern like a, um, an idea of a conversation. So you think about, you know, the cartoons where they have like the bubble that appears above them and it'll say, hi, Charlie Brown. And so it's that idea. It's like you have a bubble uh, that contains a like a sentence. And so you just um, allow your vocal cords to put some words to the essence of that sentence and, you know, oversimplified. That's the way I think of it. And then once you relay that little bubble, it's kind of like your you experience a a um, like a sense of completeness. Now, if you um, if you relayed a piece of information and it wasn't right, like it wasn't what that what that spirit wanted you to say, then you won't feel that relief. You will feel like tense. Usually for me, it's in my solar plexus is where I'm going to feel a little bit eh, like, like I just don't feel at peace with that. And so um, that means that you have to, um, so you have to say it in a different way. So you might um, say, well, okay, uh, Barbara, I feel a, a mother spirit here. I feel like your mother is here and I don't feel right like my solar plexus still has like a like a a charge or an edge on it and so um i'm like well i think it's more of your mother-in-law rather than your mom and then i feel like a sense of relief so that relief is is it's my personal way that spirit says okay you're on to it there and, um, and once you free up that piece of information, it's like the spirit can give you another idea that they want to share. So your job as a medium is to grasp those little thoughts, those ideas, whatever images, and just um, do your best to put some words to them. Like I, I just want to say that um, whatever, whatever it is, uh, you just want to uh, spit it out. And um, you know, a lot of times it, it may be very uncomfortable for you to say some of those things, but my teacher taught me that it's important to speak the unspeakable. And as long as you are doing it from your heart, like you're not trying to be um, a mean-spirited person or you're not trying to manipulate the person that you're with, that you really want to be a blessing to them. And But sometimes speaking the unspeakable is the most powerful thing that um, could be said to that person that might be able to help them more than anything to uh, free up their own life force energy or, or to be able to move on in a good way. Excuse me a second. So uh, my allergies are going crazy today. <laughs> so anyhow, um, when that all goes back to knowing why you do what you do, that I intend to be a blessing, well, there might be some hard things or some sad things that um, that that spirit is wanting to communicate to their daughter-in-law that will be able to help them both be able to go forward in a good way. So um, run it through your heart and, and um, whatever it is that you feel needs to be said 
And I think that if you can run it through your heart and it resonates, then it, it's going to be something that can be a value for that person to help them to be able to process the, the death of their loved one or to um, maybe get a different perspective and it um, to empower them for the long term. So that's where it goes back to um, knowing why you do what you do and what is really your intention. I think that every time you sit with spirit to that, it's good to do that, to create an intention for your session today. And another thing that I really think is helpful is to put a time frame on your session. So I put uh, 30 minutes and I put one hour on my sessions. And um, to me, it's like when spirit when your own guides, angels, and teachers, when they know, okay, I've got 30 minutes to sit with this person and to relay messages from her loved ones, it's like they, um, they can get it done. And, but if you don't put time on it, then it just can go all over the place. And you run the risk of overloading your psychic wires and I've done that it's very uncomfortable it takes a few days to uh, that you have to sleep to kind of pull yourself back together so you don't want to do that I hope you can take all of the things that um, that have been my mistakes and and that you don't have to make those mistakes and so that um, that you can move forward in a like faster than what I did but that was one of my mistakes. And I remember one time I went to Arkansas and I read for like four days straight. And then um, I had to go home and sleep for like a week. And what I did is I just um, kind of fried my, my circuitry. And so it took a while for spirit to rejuvenate and to heal and to help me kind of uh, pull things together. So you need to uh, put, um, weave some healing time and rejuvenation time in between. Another important thing that Spirit wanted to share with you are the ideas to help set you up for success is to um, practice this idea of right life style right thoughts and right actions. So that is going to help you to um, create an energy field that's a higher vibration that can work with the spirit world without being detrimental to you, to your, your physical life. So actions, um, you know, being a person of integrity and impeccability, uh, right thoughts. When you have negative thoughts come up about people, places, things, events, past, present, future, right now, that um, when you recognize that you're having a negative stream of thought about someone, then you want to cancel, clear, delete. And I always ask my angels to banish that negative thought or word or feeling from my energy field, be gone from this space now. I command it to be so it is so and it shall continue to be so. So that is a complete vanishing. And um, it's important that we try to keep good positive energy around us so that when we're interacting with the spirit world that we don't run the risk of vibrating at a lower level and then pulling in um, entities that um, that don't have our highest good in mind and that don't have the person that you're working with that, that don't have their highest good in mind so when you keep high vibrational thoughts around you and lead a lifestyle that is um, clean like a clean lifestyle um, not indulging in um, you know drugs or or alcohol on a uh, you know, like a real deep basis. Like I have a glass of wine every once in a while and I have a margarita every once in a while, but I don't overindulge. And uh, I think that's the key thing. But it, it's also important to monitor and ride herd on your thoughts 
And when you come across a thought that's ugly or negative, to just practice banishing it. If you can't remember anything, just remember this, cancel, clear, delete. And that way, um, that ugly body of thought is not just sitting in your personal space because like attracts to like and we're magnetic in nature so we don't want to magnetize ourselves to ugly spirits um, another thought that came to me um, some people are you know kind of afraid about um, you know well what if I have an interaction with an evil spirit or an ugly spirit that's one of the reasons that I I impress about creating intention and doing prayer before I do spirit work is so that um, that you don't run the risk of connecting with lower vibrational entities because you know they they do uh, want to excuse me they do want to mess with us from time to time and we don't need that kind of negativity so create intention create strong shields of protection around you and keep your space clear i always have a a candle burning um, or i like to have a candle burning when i do my mediumship readings when i do my galleries or circles i don't usually have a candle burning but i will set a really strong circle of protection so for those of you that have questions uh, if you want to uh, put your question on the board. I'll see if I can answer it for you. I have um, a few more ideas that I wanted to um, to bring up. Um, somebody had asked about um, working with the Ouija board and uh, connecting to spirit through the Ouija board. One of um, the the uh, the best channels of of the century um, she got her start working with the Ouija board uh, but she was um, she was a very high vibrational person and she channeled a lot of material and she got her kind of her boost or her start through working with the Ouija board I don't use it I um, I don't I'm not gonna say anything against it other than if you do use a Ouija board or any sort of device that you want to create a, um, a protection around your usage and make sure that um, the energy around the space is good. I had a, some friends of mine that were in a rock band and this has been like 20 years ago and they toured um, all the time and and when they would get to a new town and you know they're done with their music they would go to the hotel and use a Ouija board but they also used a lot of alcohol and drugs and um, they really opened a door to poltergeistic energy to huge negative evil influence in their band it took them a long time to get out from under that so but there they went over the top with drugs and alcohol and they had a lifestyle that was not pure at all um, you know they didn't practice the idea of right thoughts right action right lifestyle they were indulgent to a um, extreme and um, so that opened a doorway to negativity uh, for them so I'm gonna see if I can read any questions yeah, metaphysical meltdown. I saw that there. So um, I can't really see um, very well on here, but I don't have any questions right now. The um, what I recommend that you do is find a hopefully a development group, a mediumship development group that you can join or create one for yourself. So find yourself a couple of friends that are um, of like minds and you know high vibration or like energy that you can sit with like once a week for the purpose of developing each of your, your gifts, like your mediumship gift or however you want to work with that. So that way you, when you have somebody 
and hopefully you don't know all of their relatives on the other side. But even if you knew some of them or knew quite a bit about them, you still don't know everything. And um, it's good if you don't know anything, but you can still give messages and work with spirit. But just um, if you can get together and have a quiet room set up and just have the time set aside where there's not a, a lot of other uh, things going on where you can really focus on working with spirit and just um, ask that the angels be with you and that you create the intention to receive a message from one of their ancestors on the other side of the veil with a piece of evidence that they might be able to recognize and maybe a message for them. And then as you, you sit with spirit, it's like um, you've created your intention. So that is once I sit down in a spirit circle or in a personal reading, I've created my intention that whatever comes up, it's for them in some way. I know it's not for me. And you want to really get your own ego out of the room and sort of like take the filters off of your mouth in a good way, you know. <laughs> um, and what, whatever it is that you're feeling or you're receiving, it's like you take turns with each other in just uh, relaying whatever uh, it is that um, that you're being impressed upon with and just trust that the universe will work with you, that their angels and their ancestors will work with you. It's um, sometimes it's very awkward because we we uh, have a hard time trusting ourselves when we first get started that um, and not even when we first get started. I, I know plenty of um of well-known mediums that still, you know, get nervous about what they're doing. It's such an unknown thing. It's like you can't really prepare for a, a presentation or for a session, but you really have to be okay with flying by the seat of your pants and just know where your integrity is. If, when you know that you are, um, that you're in a good place that what you relay that you're doing it for that person's highest and best good it helps you to be a little bit braver and to trust you know whatever whatever it is that you get let me see what um okay so um joy asked about um a a personal library for or a reading list so there's several uh, mediumship books on the market right now. Uh, there, this is the information age. There is a ton of different information about mediumship and developing mediumship. All of the books that I read are the ones that are like way back in the day, like you know the turn of the century. And so Alice Bailey comes to mind, but. Um, you want to trust your angels to help you navigate towards the, the process that's going to be the best for you. And sometimes, you know, too much information can be too much. Like it, it doesn't support you. It, it just overwhelms you and like everybody has an opinion and they might conflict and you're like, well, you know, this person says that and that person says that. And I just don't know what to do. So I, um, I think that um, just trust your angels to help you kind of navigate towards the pieces that can be really meaningful for you. And you might read a whole book and there's like one line in that book that just is transformational and it, it helps you to just go to a whole level, different level of consciousness. And so buying that book was worth it for that one little line. But we have uh, a lot of resources. I like to um, collect books that, um, that have 
symbolism as well, because when you have like a really good understanding of basic symbolism, then your angels can use your understanding of say the different colors, the different meanings of colors, um, geometrical symbols, sacred geometry. I would also look for uh, books on rune stones and I tarot. So there's a lot of different uh, mystical uh, symbols that you can um, look into. One of my favorite books, it's, it's called The Women's Dictionary of Symbols. It's like three inches thick and I really can't remember the name of the lady who wrote it, but it is a huge resource, very interesting. But uh, let yourself be drawn to um, to whatever whatever you come across. So I haunted the half price bookstores for um, many many years. But um, over time, it's like I've kind of edited down my library. So. Uh, I still have a ton of books, but uh, now it's like um, I have my favorites. So, so one of my very favorites is actually a tarot handbook by Angelus Ariane, and it just has a richness of um, the different um, universal meanings of, of symbols and colors and numbers. Numerology is another one. So that's my answer to that is, um, is just um, see what's out there and what you're drawn to. But don't feel like you have to have every single book that was written on the subject. Uh, some of them were, um, some of the different um, stuff was, it was kind of written for a certain era and this is another, we're over our time just a little bit, but hopefully uh, you don't have to go right now. But um, in the old days, uh, mediumship was, um, it was a lot harder on a medium because um, there was more of a separation between the veils and the physical dimension was a little bit more dense. And so, in this sort of turning of a, of a new era, it's like the vibration is a little higher. It's a little easier for um, people to discern uh, between the worlds to receive images and messages and, and to see things. And that's why all of a sudden you have so many people that are like, wow, I think I'm a medium or I, I'm intuitive. It's like, um, the veil is a little bit thinner. So like back in the day, unfortunately, a lot of mediums, they didn't, uh, they didn't live a really long life because doing mediumship and channeling was, was a really, it was very hard on their physical body. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's like it would burn, burn out their life force energy. So they would die like around 50. So that was then, this is now, in this day and age, it is not as um, difficult for us to uh, pull a stream of consciousness from the other side of the veil through our own physical. It's not as detrimental, if, if at all. Like, I don't think it is uh, detrimental. It can be if you don't prepare the pathways. So your biggest takeaways today for setting yourself up as a medium is to commit and follow through with a regular meditation routine that includes a Hatha yoga breathing technique and to create an intention for why you want to, to do this and to set up yourself for a program uh, that you can um, connect to other people that are interested in the paranormal, in mediumship, and, and just create a base around you so that you have somebody to talk to, to bounce ideas off with. Um, if you have other mediums in your area where you live that put on a regular circle, 
then you want to bust your butt to get to their their circles to uh, work with whatever programs that they put out so that you're putting yourself out in the world and you're, um, you're kind of, you're working your gift. And to feel, um, I just think it is so important that you use your natural gifts and put them out in the world as best you can and not ever let anybody else judge you. I think that is a huge thing to, uh, to really take to heart because when you know why you're doing what you're doing and you've done your foundation work, you can be sure that whatever information that you're receiving, that there is some reason that you are, are getting it and it has some relevance to the person that you're working with. Unfortunately, um, sometimes people that you're sitting with, uh, they quite often they may go into an altered state of consciousness where they might just forget like different spirits names or, or different things that happened with the family. And even sometimes they, um, I've had um, people that sit in circles with me for whatever reason, they think that it, it's funny to mess with the medium and, and you could tell them something that is an accurate piece of information and they will, they will tell you, no, I don't know what you're talking about, when in reality it, it is the truth and they, for whatever reason. And I think that, that there is an end game to that. And what spirit wants you to know is to trust yourself and what you're getting and that on some level it, it is important or it has um, reality and that, uh, that you know you're getting it. So don't feel like everything has to be validated in order to be accurate because that is not the case. There are many, many times where I have brought through a spirit that uh, was related to that person, and a couple of days later, they'll call me and they're like, you know, I, I understand who that person is now. I know exactly who you were talking about, and I totally forgot about him, or whatever. So um, you can't dwell on that, and you you don't want to let yourself and your development be affected by other people's opinion. And I know it's, it's kind of a delicate fine line between um, it's good to get feedback and to get validation from other people. And I think that is an important part of how we learn and how we develop. But um, when you, when you have a rock solid understanding of your commitment to being of service and being of value and of um, pulling through information from the highest and best in the purest way, then you can trust that the universe is going to work with you. So I hope that this has been helpful to you. I think that um, there's just so much joy in being able to uh, relay information for people and bring through their relatives. It, um, it, it really, it's hard to explain how rewarding that it can be when you know that you've made a connection that um, it can be life changing for that person. So it, it definitely has its rewards. Um, it's kind of like a, a small sisterhood or brotherhood here. And so I think we need to stick together and support one another and uh, try to shore each other up as best that we can. So that wraps it up for today. And if you have questions that, um, that might come up later, then feel free to message me here or to send me an email or you can post them on this link. and uh, But I think if you email me, that's going to be the best way that I can um, 
you know, get your, for sure get your question, but I will be happy to answer it the best way that I can. So I hope you've enjoyed our little summer psychic class today on mediumship, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. I'm Marvina. Bye-bye.